In class, we saw an example of uh, how to use amortized analysis to better analyze an algorithm in the case of um, trying to emulate a queue using two stacks. Today, we will see an example of how to use amortized analysis to differentiate between two um, different algorithms for the same problem. The example that we will look at is that of global stacks. So as we know that uh, when we implement a stack using an array, when the array is full, we are forced to declare a stack full uh, exception, although there may be memory available and there may be space, but we are still saying that the stack is full. So can we do something about this? That is the question. So the answer is yes, we can. We can declare a new larger array and shift all the elements of the stack into it. There is some pseudo code here, which shows you how it is done. When the size of the array, uh, when the size of the stack gets to n, where n is the size of the array that we have declared, then we choose a new array of length fn and we'll see how to choose fn and then we shift all the elements one by one uh, from the old uh, array into the new array and uh, then we have space now and we can insert the new element into that space. So the question is how big should this new array be? So let us consider two possibilities. In the first case we increase uh, the size of the array by one uh, or any constant. We will look at the constant one. Uh, the analysis that we will present will work for any constant. And in the other case, the size of the new array is double of the size of the previous array. In other words, if the size of the array uh, was n, we have 2n, which is an order n increase in size. How do we determine which of these is better? Is bigger better? Let us see how to analyze this. So let us start with a full array of size n, a full stack of size n, and calculate the number of array operations taken to increase the number of elements to 2n. That is, let us insert elements n plus 1, n plus 2, so on till 2n, and compute the time taken, the time taken in terms of array operations. The strategy that takes fewer array operations over this entire sequence of operations is a better strategy in an average sense. This kind of analysis is known as amortized analysis, where we analyze not a, one single operation, but a whole sequence of operations. So let us look at this now in detail. For the doubling strategy, when we have element n plus 1 being inserted, or pushed into the stack, we need n plus 1 array operations to insert, since the entire previous array has to be copied across, and then one new element has to be added. All other operations take simply all other push operations take simply one array operation uh, since there is space in the array for all of them in the new increased array. So this makes a total of n plus 1 uh, for the first of these operations and then 1 for all the remaining n minus 1 operations. That's simply 2n operations in total. However, for the constant increase strategy, we need to copy the entire array into a new bigger array at every push. So that is when the n plus first element comes, we need n plus one time. When the n plus second uh, element comes, we again uh, need to copy the entire array. So we need n plus two steps and then n plus three steps and so on until 2n. This sum, as you know, is omega n squared. Uh, it's easy to see. It's n into n plus one uh, minus n into n plus one by two. Sum of the first two n natural numbers minus the sum of the first n natural numbers. So it's omega n squared. So clearly, for this particular input sequence, the doubling strategy is better in an amortized sense. That is, the over these n operations, the amount of time taken by the doubling strategy is constant. It's 2n divided by n. Whereas for the constant increase uh, strategy, the time taken is an average of order n per operation since it's n squared divided by n. But the question is, uh, is this does this hold true in general or is this only true for this particular uh, input sequence that we have considered? To do so, let us consider a general sequence of S stack operations, push, pop in whatever order. Let us identify a subsequence P1, P2, so on, PS prime, such that PI is the operation that increases the stack, the size of the stack up to I for the very first time. So the first push operation will be P1 because before the first push operation the size of the stack is 0. Uh, the second push operation may or may not be the uh, BP2. So let's uh, see uh, an example to understand this better. Suppose we have push A, push B, push C, pop, pop, push D. So P1 is push A of course, 
P2 is push P because after uh, push B, the size of the stack increases to 2. P3 is push C because the size increases to 3. After this, we have two pop operations. So before push D, the size of the stack is now 1. So after we push D, the size of the stack goes up to uh, 2. But we do not consider push D in our sequence since the size of the stack has already risen to 2 at some point earlier, although it may have fallen below 2 since that time. So in this subsequence, we are going to consider only those operations which increase the uh, size of the stack because our uh, stack size increasing operation, which is either doubling or increased by constant, can only take place when a new uh, si a stack size is achieved. So we will analyze these two strategies only on the array operations taken by this subsequence of push operations. Note that the other stack operations require the same number of array operations in both our growth strategies. Because in any other uh, stack operation, the size of the stack uh, is not growing for the first time. So uh, if you consider push D in the example above, the size of the stack has already gone up to 3. So we know that when C was pushed up, uh, successfully, after that point, the size of the stack was at least 3. So when we push D in the second position, that space is available to us already. So now let us look at the two strategies. If our initial array size is n, then the time taken by constant increase as before is n plus 1 plus n plus 2 and so on up till s prime. This is omega s prime squared minus n squared approximately n squared. Um, if s prime is very large with respect to n, this is just omega s uh, prime squared. And as we know that in general, um, the number of operations will be much larger than the initial size of the stack. So in general, we can say that this is omega s prime squared. In another, another way of thinking about it is that we know that s prime will be at least n. If we are considering a case where the stack has had to un undergo increase, then at least n uh, uh, operations will have, uh, have to happen and at least n times the size of the stack will have to increase. In general, it will increase much more. So that's why omega s squared is the correct um, way of putting this number of uh, this function which describes the number of array operations. Now let us look at the doubling strategy. We need a little more uh, uh, fine-grained analysis here. So let us take uh, t, define t to be a floor of log s prime n. That is to say that if you take s prime and you look at the highest power of 2 which is smaller than s prime, then if that is 2 to the t, then t is the value that is defined over here. Note now that there are exactly t new array allocations that happen in the doubling strategy. These happen uh, at push number n plus 1, push number 2n plus 1, 4n plus 1, out of the subsequence that we have considered all the way up to 2 to the power t n plus 1. These are the only points at which the doubling strategy is actually going to allocate a new array and going to copy the elements of the previous array into it. And these are the ones that we are now going to analyze carefully to see what is the total number of what are the total number of array operations that take place at these points. So the time taken for these stacks, the stack shifts that happen at these points, as we know, is the sum n plus 1, 2 n plus 1, so on till 2 to the power t n plus 1, because uh, the time taken for the stack shift uh, when I do 2 to the power, when I shift uh, at 2 to the power uh, i n plus 1 is 2 to the power i n plus 1, uh, the, uh, the size of the array at that point. Now this sum we know is 2 to the power t plus 1 into n minus 1 and 2 to the power t plus 1 n is less than or equal to 2 s prime by the definition of t if we sum the gp uh, by the definition of t. Now in between these particular steps there are operations, uh, all the push operations in between this uh, are take time one because space is available for the pushing operation to be done at that time and so we just have to do an rewrite. So uh, we add to this 2s prime a maximum of s prime uh, uh, steps for the other push operations and we get a total of at most 3s prime which is order s prime number of uh, array operations. So we see in this case that in even in the general setting doubling wins. Now we have to be clear about one thing here that the subsequence that uh, doubling the doubling strategy wins on this particular subsequence. 
So if the other operations, which are simply push pop, push pop happening within uh, already allocated available stack area, if uh, those operations dominate this uh, time s prime or s prime squared then uh, uh, what happens is that the time of both these strategies is roughly the same however in the kind of input sequences where the size continuously keeps increasing or the size increases what is happening more generally and the uh, work that goes on within a pre-allocated stack is not as much then we can clearly see that the doubling strategy has a significant advantage over the constant increase strategy and that significant advantage is uh, order of magnitude that is it is big O of s prime whereas in the constant increase strategy it is big O of s prime squared so it's linear in s prime versus quadratic in s prime and we know that s prime is at least n it could be much much larger than n so it is a uh, advantage of at least a factor of n so in conclusion, we saw that although the worst case time for of the push operation was the same for both strategies, we know that uh, in both these strategies we could have an order n uh, uh, push step because the uh, increase in stack uh, leads to the entire array being uh, copied into a new array. But over a large sequence of operations, the situation looked very different. And uh, this is very relevant because uh, typically when we have a stack, we are not doing one or two operations, but we are going to do a large number of operations using that stack for whatever application. And so uh, when, when we actually look at the running time over a large sequence of operations, we will find that the doubling strategy does much better over that large sequence of operations. It is in fact linear in this uh, number of operations, whereas the constant increase strategy uh, is quadratic. And that is that can be a huge difference if the number of uh, operations is uh, in the say of 10 to the power 6 or in the millions or billions it, it can be a massive massive difference it can be the difference between seconds and hours for the same algorithm to conclude so we see that amortized analysis provides a way of differentiating between algorithms that can't be differentiated between using simply worst case analysis there may be a big difference in performance but worst case analysis or the analysis of individual operations will not throw up uh, that difference However, amortized analysis, taking large sequences of uh, actions into account, of operations into account, can take care of this uh, difference and can highlight it and bring it out and help us make the correct decision on which algorithm is better.